Joining us now to review some of the headlines of today's newspapers from around the world is Arise News Analyst Emmanuel Great Malabite Efeni. Good morning, Emmanuel. Good morning, Ruben. Good morning, Ayo. Good, Good morning, morning Rufa. Rufa. Yes, yeah, so we'll start the review with this day, Nigeria's newspaper of record. The lead story, carry Nigeria to be net exporter of refined petroleum products next year. Says Tinubu saved NMPC from going bankrupt by removing fuel subsidy. Yes, Mele Kiari, the group CEO of NMPCL. Uh, is, making, is this a prediction? I don't want to call it a prophecy because I know it's not a pastor. But he's saying that next year, Nigeria will be net exporter of petroleum products. Well, I, I just hope he will break this down. Um, because if you look at it, if the Dangote refiner starts churning out products at full capacity, the world's largest single train refinery, all the refineries we have, two in Port Harcourt, one in Kaduna, one in worry, yes, my city, uh, if all start producing at full capacity, yes, this may just be possible. But the minimum Nigerians are asking for from the NMPCL is that at least let's be able to meet our local demands of PMS, of diesel, of aviation fuel, so that we don't spend scarce resources importing this product from outside the country. About the only OPEC country doing that right now. That is the minimum we ask for. But the NMPC uh, um, boss is saying, no, NMPC can do better. Next year, we'll start exporting to other countries. So I like staying positive. But this positivity must be based on facts mm -hmm. on ground. Whether it is a possibility or not remains to be seen. Now, the Punch newspaper are also reporting about petroleum products. The Punch newspaper, federal government denies subsidy return, more fuel stations shot. NMPCL blame pockets of fuel queues on road delays. 25, ref 25 refinery license idle over subsidy, says Kiari. Now, the, the uh, Nigerian Tribune newspaper also has that as its lead. Um, federal government no longer paying for subsidy. But the story just beside the photograph, the front page of the Nigerian Tribune. Yes, Tinubu appoints Duro Toye for others into media advisory team. Yes, fellow Duro Toye, business consultant, well known, has been a well known business consultant has been appointed by President Trump as senior special assistant to the president on national values and social justice. I'm sure Ruben and Aso, Rock, uh, Aso Villa ancestor will be able to break that down, what he wants to do. Uh, of course, there's also Frederick Wabufo, senior special assistant to the president on public engagement. And um, there's also uh, Linda Akigbe, Senior Special Assistant Strategic Communications, who has been seconded to serve as a communication advisor to the president of the ECOWAS Commission. And there is Aliyu Audu, Senior Special Assistant to the president on public affairs. Of course, they are to serve in the media and publicity directorate, and uh, the president has charged them to uphold the highest standards of decorum and decency in their engagement with members of the public. Well, uh, that really, this uh, appointment were, they were announced in uh, a release by Ajuri Ngelale, the president's uh, spokesperson. Now, we look at other newspapers, the Daily Sun newspaper. Oh, the same uh, uh, lead story, but uh, next year, Nigeria to export fuel next year, federal government. But below this, below the photograph on the front page of uh, the the, the Daily Sun newspaper, the Daily Sun newspaper. Church leaders charge Tinubu to end insecurity. Police rescue 171 kidnapped victims from terrorists in Kaduna alone. Now, the Daily Trust newspaper, something that should disturb not only housewives, but also husbands who spend money. Cooking gas price hits 1,200 naira per kilogram. Marketers blame supply disruption 
say further hike likely. Nigerians may resort to using firewood. Expert federal government working with NLNG to ramp up supply of fisher. Well, even firewood don't come cheap these days. If you ask those who still use firewood, they will tell you it's been affected by inflation also. But Nigeria is a gas-producing nation. We have gas in abundance. There's no reason why we shouldn't be able to meet our demands, as, as it were. But the price of cooking gas going up is not good news for Nigerians who are already battling with inflation, food inflation, amongst others. Now, below the photograph in the front page of the Daily Trust, Tinimbu's economic policies going awry, Financial Times, asked President to stop announcing plans without implementation idea. Well, it's an advisory from the uh, editors of the Financial Times. President, the Nigerian president, I'm sure this has been deliberated upon, discussed by Nigerian newspapers also. Policies, before you make announcements, must be properly articulated. You put plan in place for implementation, not announce and you scramble to implement. Now, the nation newspaper, Tinimbu, I am focused on lifting Nigeria to greatness. SGF, briefs president, the stability under APC government says envoy. Yes, now we just move over to the Guardian newspaper. Scarcity of diagnostic services cripples cancer care in Southeast. Yes, MRI scan, difficult to come by according to this report. Um, and um, yes, talking about the treatment of cancer, uh, cancer in the Southeast and there's a problem of care right there because of lack of equipment to do the right diagnostics. Now, the Business Day newspaper reporting Egypt goes from role model for Nigeria to basket case. Not too long ago, Egypt was held up as a model country for Nigeria after, it, it, uh, after its uh, bold economic uh, reforms in 2016 made by the Arab world most populous country, the darling of investors. Of course, that is no more because Egypt has since become a basket case. Now, the Vanguard newspaper, envoys stranded as federal government foot drags on implementation. That's talking about the recall of ambassadors, which the federal government announced recently that that process must be completed by the end of October. But envoys are foot dragging. And the reason is that no machinery in motion for envoys to return, according to sources, say ambassadors yet to receive I, AIEs, cash backing. I won't return without getting my entitlement. One envoy is insisting over zealous politicians pressuring, hurting the process. Ambassador Keshi is stating, notes they have destroyed Nigerian foreign ministry. I'm sure <laughs> this is one issue where Professor Akia will not mind weighing in. The status of ambassadors who have been recalled, but no provision made for them to come back home right now. Now, the leadership newspaper, Insecurity, 60,000 schools vulnerable to attacks nationwide, nine years after safe school initiatives. And of course, the bandits have been having a field day attacking schools uh, in the northern part of the country, especially in the northwest. Now, the foreign newspapers quickly, the Guardian newspaper of UK, Israel declares siege on Gaza as Hamas threatens captive. UN chief condemns the escalating violence amid soaring death toll. The, the independent newspaper of uh, UK also reporting this story, war in Middle East. 10 Britons dead or missing as Israel exacts revenge. Kidnap fears for UK nationals as 11 US citizens confirm dead. Israel orders complete siege to starve Gaza of food and power. Netanyahu tells Biden he has no choice but to invade Gaza. Yeah, the, the Times of London reporting this story, Hamas, one hostage will die for every Gaza strike. Terrorism threatening uh, to 
broadcast civilian executions. Israel bombards strip, strip and cuts off power. Of course, the photograph on uh, the front page of the Times, a whole family killed in that Hamas in invasion in uh, one of the kibbutz. Entire kibbutz family murdered. Ruben, Rufai, and Very Ayo. Sad Very sad about what is happening. We, yeah. we can see the humanitarian toll it's taking. And the message released uh, by the Kassim Brigade wing yesterday of Hamas, uh, that message was quite chilling. I think it was, it was, it was first run on the Arabic service of Algiers, uh, Jazeera, and uh, what they pretty much said was very chilling, that uh, for every strike, that they should seize the strike, for every strike that they're going to kill, and if possible, show it live, you know, via media outlets and all of that. But a lot of investigation has been also as regards how Israel missed it. America has decided to be able to give them, you know, some support with the Iron Shield system, to be able to give them some armory, to be able to shoot down some of the rockets coming in. But it's a barrage of rockets coming in. And the fact that it's not only now on the southern front that they're having close to the Gaza Strip, also up north, you're having Hez Hezbollah. Israel having clashes with Hezbollah militants, and, you know, and that might be a replay of uh, the war that happened between Israel and the southern part of Lebanon. So the international dynamics is on. You know, Saudi Arabia is calling for peace. All the shows of other ones are calling for peace. Very, very sad times. I mean, it was the killing at the music festival that I can't get my mind over, where the militants came and they shot over 260 people dead and prayed and some people. Very, very sad one. Well, before we go, two things that I need to point out. I read a very interesting article in this day, today, The Advocate, by Onika Braithwaite which I think is a very well-informed opinion uh, by somebody who understands the subject about what she calls Atiku's voyage of discovery, an endless soap opera, or a continuous soap opera. And she made quite a number of, you know, uh, foundational statements that law and morals are not the same. Two, law does not follow logic. The law is an ass. That's from Charles Dickens. Charles Dickens used to ridicule lawyers a lot. And then that the judiciary has been turned into a scapegoat. And that lawyers have to be sanctioned for turning the law on his head. And that there should be discipline within the bar, which is a very sound, you know, argument. The rest of it, I recommend to people to read. Only a couple of great weight in today's this day, the law pages. The editor of the law pages. Yes. Now, this second is point yeah. is the menace of fake news. Yesterday, the social media just went on a misinformation uh, overdrive. They announced the death of a statesman, General Yakubu Goman, 88 years old, only for the elder statesman to come later in the day and say, look, I'm alive and I'm not in a hurry to leave uh, the enjoyment <laughs> of, uh, uh, of, of this uh, space where uh, uh, pepper soup and jollof rice is, uh, are still uh, special delicacies. But the issue is about fake news. Robert, my, but it's not social media, Dr. Yeah, Bati. I, 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 is it not I social beg, media? No, I beg to disagree. Media, actually, it was the same traditional media that announced the death oh, of Namdi Azikiwe. No, but yesterday, no, 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 but yesterday so that, that, that story media. was on social media. It's on the same every tradition. Platform. It's media and media. Well, no, okay. I don't know the source, but social media was circulating. Dr. Yeah. Abadji. And misinformation is a threat to society. No, Dr. Abadji. People should not kill people on uh, social media or even in my, the My phones uh, were besieged <laughs> yesterday by calls. And I just told them, did you hear it on our eyes? No. I said, so it has yeah, not yeah. happened. Okay. So, <laughs> so when we say social media, in I the know. days of traditional media, they announced the death of Nabi Aziku, and it was a prominent newspaper in this country that did it. And anyway, but fake news uh, is a major problem. Fake news is bad. Which is why Google and platform. other high-tech uh, platforms... In defense of social media. <laughs> 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 a lot of ignorance on social media.